Heating and Cooling, Lot Motors, United Wireless, Lewis Automotive Group, Beaver Creek Feeders, Scott County Lumber, Weathers Land and Livestock, Fairly Feed Yard, First National Bank, Pearl Adjuster, Scott County Hospital, Scott Pro, Security State Bank, Western Kansas Insurance, Wheatland Electric, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Hugh and Berta Benz, Turner Sheet Metal, Spuds Hunting and Fishing Supply, Giftologist, Mom and Pop Burger Stop, and the Scott City Booster Club. Welcome to the Scott Co-op Pre-Game Show. When it comes to success, it's all about teamwork. Whether it's the Scott City Beavers or your farming operation, it's teamwork that counts. You can count on the entire Scott Co-op team to make your operation successful. Here's Adam Kadavy. It is a warm 86 degree evening here on the final day of summer at Darner Field in Scott City as the Beavers wrap up their three game home strand and their final district game for 2023 tonight as they take on an old friend from the Mid State Activities Association, the Hayes TMP Marion Monarchs. Good Friday evening to you. Welcome to another edition of Beaver Football here on Mix 94.5 and, of course, WesternKansasNews.com and across the Beaver Broadcasting Network. I'm Adam Kadavy filling in for Tim McGonigal tonight. Uh, pitching in here late, uh, Skip Numerink, and uh, it's Melody Toscano, your studio engineer, back at the Mix 94.5 studios, and welcome aboard tonight here, Skip. Well, it's great to be here, and this ought to be a, an exciting game, and like all games, you know, blocking, tackle, penalties, and uh, turnovers are, are going to be huge. You know, I'm, I'm really hoping our team can come out and avoid some of the costly mistakes that we've been making uh, and we ought to do well if that's the case. Absolutely. Uh, tonight, uh, starting off with TMP out of the Mid-Continent League, they're 3-0 and on the year. Second time uh, they've been in 3-0 and uh, in as uh, many years. First time they've done that since 2002, 2003, when Gene Flax was the head coach there. Uh, they uh, picked up a 36-28 victory over Plainville on Friday night, last Friday night in Hayes there. Scott City trying to get off the schneid here after a 6-0 loss to a Millwood team. And a, what an absolutely uh, outstanding game it was uh, between the two teams. It was just unfortunate that Scott City fell on the short end. But, you know, these two teams, they have a long history between each other and should be another good battle tonight. Yeah, there's been a lot of really close games over the years between Scott City and TMP. And, you know, you brought up back when I was in high school, we got down 21 to nothing against TMP in the first half. And one of the most exciting games I ever played in uh, college or high school, you know, we came back and, and won that game 22-21 late. And, but there's been playoff games uh, both here and at, uh, at Hayes. Now, I even go back when they used to be the St. Joseph Military Academy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this, this, this is a good game. It should be a good game. Uh, TMP's been up, they've been down, and it looks like they're back into a rebuilding program. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, their head coach is Grant Stevenson in his first season. We'll get on to uh, TMP and him in a little bit as well here. But we'll have more of your pregame show. We'll come back in three minutes, and we're going to hear the comments from head coach Jim Turner as Scott City gets set to take on the Monarchs of TMP, the 26th meeting between the two teams back in three minutes. This is Scott City Beaver Football. have this amazing way of making a positive impact in our community. Whether it's helping children, boosting local economies, or creating role models, that's our goal at American Implement too. We believe in being a part of the communities we serve by just being a good neighbor. Thanks for being ours.
Low Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. Fairly Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the beavers. Customers who make purchases will receive a swag bag. Shop early to get the best deals. Make giftologists in downtown Scott City a spot to shop Saturday, September 30th from 10 to 3 during Wimmy Diddle. Welcome back to Garner Field in Scott City. Adam Cadavy with you on Mix 94.5. Your pregame interviews brought to you by Farm Bureau Financial Services with Hugh and Berta Benz in Scott City and Leota. I'm joining with Coach Jim Turner here in the pregame. And, Coach, thanks for joining me here this evening. I know it was a, a, a tough loss last Friday night to a very good Millwood team, 6 to nothing here at home. And uh, a game that was just kind of – you guys really controlled a lot in that game, just didn't show up on the scoreboard. Uh, the penalties and turnovers really hurt you guys. But overall – Looking back at the film and watching the game, how did you feel like you guys played overall against a pretty good Millwood team? Well, overall, you know, played pretty well. We just made too many mistakes. We sat down in the red zone. We kind of moved the ball over the place, but just couldn't score. You know, been a few games in my time here. Been like that. Been back like to the Garden Thing game in the playoffs and the Pratt game way back. And you know, it's just it's hard to hard to swallow when you know it's it's one you should have should have won. You start with the defense, and it was really a 180 from. <laughs> From the first two games, even uh, or even with the Ray game, to last Friday night, and is it kind of one of those situations where they're really starting to figure things out in their assignments? Yeah, I was really proud of how they played, how well they played, and you know how sound and, and how hard they played. But we did give up a touchdown on the long drive, you know, when they're in the second half. So, you know, we, we weren't perfect by any means, but they, they did they did improve a lot. And, Saw a lot of good things out of each one of them in their individual positions, you know, and reading their keys and attacking. So, you know, we just want to keep getting better. Obviously, different style of offense tonight, but we want to keep improving. Offensively, you guys did move the ball pretty well against that <laughs> Millwood defense, and uh, you had to be pretty happy how you moved. Just kind of one of those things where it's you just weren't unable to finish drives. Yeah, you know, last year we couldn't move the ball much on them. They had that big D tackle that gave us problems, and, you know, we, we, we did a really good job. We moved the ball. We blocked a lot of things really well and had some really good runs by our running backs and, and quarterback ran the ball really nice. and. You know, so it was it was a good thing, good to see, and it just kind of started out after that first three and out. Then we, we started moving the ball and continued for the rest of the game. So you know, just you know, it's just finishing the drives off. We got to be a little bit a little bit better, you know, finishing off, making better decisions. Is probably the biggest thing, and then eliminating some penalties. Once again, Coach Jim Turner here in the pregame tonight. Scott City faces the TMP Mary Monarchs. That's your third and. Uh, in a row of being at home here tonight. TMP comes in undefeated, uh, had a big uh, rally against Plainville last Friday night to win 36-28. And, uh, you take a look at TMP, they lost a big uh, all-purpose player in the Harris kid from a year ago, but they do return a big chunk of their uh, their players from that lineup that you guys faced a year ago. Yeah, they're big up front, uh, 260, 280. Those guys, I think, have started since they're sophomores or seniors now. Uh, you know, another 220 kid on the line, 200. They're, they're going to be big kids, and they can they can play. Uh, I was impressed with those big guys last year, and they're, they're a year older now. You know, on film they look really good. And we're going to have to play real well up front, control line of scrimmage, and that's going to be a tough task. Uh, they're a team that it's about 75-25 percentage on uh, run pass up run three-fourths of the time and is that something especially for your secondary and your safeties in particular that uh, you don't need to be kind of sold or not bite on the run too much yeah the corners especially gonna have to sit back uh you know and, and protect against the play action pass because that's what they're throwing is play action they're, they hope their running game is good enough that it sucks your linebackers and secondary up and then they're going to play action they're going to show a little block and then take off down the field so we've got to be really disciplined at the corners not let them do that to us uh 
you know, but hopefully we can we can do a good job up front and make them one dimensional as the game goes on. Defensively, TNP runs kind of a more of a three five look, but the way you guys have your offense set up, it's going to feel like more of a five three look, I imagine. Yeah, they're going to they're have to come stop the run, but you know, we can we can move ball through the air too. So hopefully we'll use everything we've got, be a little versatile, and give them some confusion. You know, bigger problem concern about it. We have some injuries, some nagging stuff, and some kids out. Uh, you know, they won't play this week, so hopefully their their replacements can step in, whether it's on special teams or offense or defense. Hopefully they come out and play really well. I know it's been a, a tough week emotionally for the kids and even probably for the for the coaching staff as well with the uh, loss of a, a high school uh, student. And have the kids and have been have they been able to kind of respond in practice and you know keep focus with the, the game at hand yeah you know it's it's tough on the community uh something like this occurs and the kids you know it was really tough early in the week it's, it's gotten a little bit better you know one thing you you got to try to i mean football is a great opportunity to go at least an hour and a half out here and think about something else you know kind of get away from the reality part of some of this a little bit and they, they struggle early. They, they've improved as the week's gone on. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll come out and be fine. Once again, it is Coach Jim Turner pregame tonight. Scott City playing host here to TMP Marion. 26th meeting all time between the programs. Uh, Coach, uh, once again, thank you for the time and uh, good luck to you guys. All right, thanks, Ed. That was Scott City Beaver Coach Jim Turner. Your pregame interview brought to you by Farm Bureau Financial Services with Hugh and Berta Benz and Scott City and Leota. More to come in your pregame show. We'll have a breakdown of the matchup. Also bring you starters, keys of the game, and the kickoff after this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver. For football. If you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides new and used vehicles. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet and GMC dealership in Scott City. BBN is supported by To us, it's about so much more than just providing the technology. It's about enriching the communities we live in. Because your community is our community. Where you live. Where you work. Where you play. We do too. Whatever you do. And wherever you are. Our service supports you. Next Tech Wireless. We are Kansas. The dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk. Exceptional results. BBN is supported by Norder Supply, Lone Tree Farms, Pioneer Communications, Beaver Booster Club, White's Food Liner, Scott City Eye Center, Shells, Flowers and More, Scott City Pharmacy, Giftologists, They said this place was too isolated to call home. They said it was too remote to build a community. And then one day, a farmer strung a copper wire from one fence post to another and changed everything. We didn't build the communities of Southwest Kansas. No, we just brought them together.
teams here uh, coming into tonight here and uh, for a second straight year they both have identical records Scott City at two and one uh, TMP at three and zero, oh, and you know with TMP you look at their schedule yes it's been it hasn't been as strong uh, all the teams haven't won a game yet but you know what they've taken care of business uh, from the beginning and have had some injuries as well along the way well, uh, you know, Coach Stevenson did a nice job mm -hmm. when he was at Plainville. I mean, he took them into the playoffs several times, and, uh, you know, they lost some, cup, uh, some tough games to Smith mm -hmm. Center along the way, um, which everybody seems to lose a couple tough ones to Smith yeah. Center. Yeah. Uh, he, he's done well, and now he's moved on mm -hmm. to TMP, and, you know, we know we're going to have a play against a well-coached team today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Coach Stevenson. Well, he had to play, face his former team last week, and he told me the other day that was that was really a tough situation because he'd been at Plainville for eight years, and, and TMP had to rally to uh, win that game 36-28, but he told me just he was really happy for both teams, and it was good to see the other side. It was just a – it was a probably – I would almost describe it as probably one of the toughest 48 minutes that he's had to deal with as a football coach. Yeah, I know it was a, it was a big deal to, to the Plainville community mm -hmm. and, and players too. Uh, I have a son that lives up there, and you know, p people like Coach Stevenson up there in Plainville, and, and he did a good job for him, you know. And, and it's a little bit different in professional sports, but you know, you have a coach leave Kansas City and go to Denver, you know, there's going to be <laughs> some feelings about when those games roll around on you. Yeah, absolutely. But he does have a pretty good uh, group of seniors that will carry a lot of the load. And this is going to be a pretty young team. They'll start a few sophomores and even a couple of freshmen will be sprinkled in there as well. But the run at quarterback, uh, Peyton Schwartz, he's a third straight week starting there at the quarterback spots. He did not start there at the beginning of the year, just kind of out of they needed somebody to fill that role. Their sophomore quarterback, Carson Lyles, broke his leg in week one and is out for the year. But uh, between uh, Schwartz and Griffin Shoemaker, they have uh, about 12 of their touchdowns this year. Griffin Shoemaker already 520 yards, but this is a team that Scott City will have to will be seeing a lot of run. They have uh, 260, 280 pound guards, left and right guard. That's a lot of beef there. And Scott City saw that a year ago, thankfully. But you know what TMP likes to do? They'll run that flex bone. And they like to run at three. It's about three to one on run pass ratio. Well, it, it's good to see TMP getting their numbers up too. You know, it, yes. it hasn't been that long ago when uh, they might have had 17, 18, 20 players out. And I know they they have more now. And it looks like they're in a, in a building program getting more numbers out. Um, you know, as far as the game goes tonight, I think a couple mm -hmm. big uh, items are time of possession. I'm not usually a big time of possession. Mm -hmm guru or think that it's that important but when you face a team that runs and is committed to running the ball if, if you can get the time of possession down that means you're getting them off the field and you know three four five downs and uh, that that could be huge another thing I, i'd like to see us do is get, get balls to our, our playmakers in space and let them go you know mm -hmm. colin mcdaniel he can turn a five yard out into a 65 yard touchdown pretty darn easy so you know uh, we have some other players. We just need to get them the ball where they can do something with it. That means line blocking. It means blocking downfield with receivers mm -hmm. and not turning it over. Yeah, TMP, it would be a little different defensive look that Scott City will face. They run a 3-5 defense, but Coach has already planned that, you know, with Scott City with the run first mentality, it would be like facing a 5-3 defense. And so it changes up your alignment and how you like to block a little bit out of that. But I think it's, it's going to be a good sight to see. And nice thing is the Beavers have quite a bit of balance uh, in their offense. And we saw it even though it was a rough week last week for Camden. But we've we seen a, a pretty good uh, passing attack and a, and a pretty good rushing attack as well. Well, we, we can do things. It's just w will, we, will we make the right? Mm -hmm. reads will we get to the ball to the right person uh, you know Rumford's a, a, a great target to throw the ball to but everybody else mm -hmm. knows that too so you know they're they, they can't double team everybody out there and like I said we, we've got people that can tor turn the short throws into the long throw the long run so you know, I hope we, we just execute all we gotta do is execute you know it's on the Scott City side this has been an offense they're really further along uh, than they were at this point a year ago and even in the loss a year ago down in Oklahoma City against Millwood they uh, they had around 125 yards of offense against that same team last week had 283 yards of offense and so you got to have the feeling that it's the second year in the system that they use and that has really uh, benefited Scott City and it just feels like they're more comfortable and 
able to add more uh, uh, options in the offensive sets. Exactly, and you know what? The more you can do can also be a curse. I mean, <laughs> yes. if, if there's a handful of things we do really well, we need to stick with those handful of things. You know, I think, you know, being a Chiefs fan, one thing that frustrates the heck out of me is, you know, sometimes the easiest way to hammer a nail into a piece of wood is just to get the hammer and hit it hard, uh, you know, without all the, the, the tricks, mm -hmm. you know, it, just overpower teams. And on the other side, the defense, has really played pretty good. I, they played their best defense of the year last week against Millwood, even though in a 6 nothing loss. And that's an offense that scored 81 points a week ago, previous week did uh, Millwood, and to hold them to just barely over 100 yards. And they had that 43-yard scoring drive. That was 43 of their 100 yards of offense last week. And holding an Oklahoma commit to wide receiver to just one catch for 11 yards, that's a credit to the secondary for Scott City. Well, I've, I've been impressed with the – you know, the weight we've put on, mm -hmm. and it's been good weight. Uh, we've got some people that have really uh, worked hard in the in the weight room and, and improved themselves. Our, our quickness is pretty good, too. You know, we just, everybody do their job That is a, is a good mantra. You know, you worry about your job and trust your teammates to do theirs. Yeah, and, you know, defensively, we've had uh, new starters in that interior linebacker spot and Tracer Chapman and Oscar Mendez and, it's perfectly fitting that those two are their leading, uh, Scott City's leading tacklers, Chapman with 29 and Mendez with 27. That's who you want to be your leading tacklers. Well, I'm really happy for some of these kids. When I, when I coached them down in middle school, a lot of these kids didn't really get a lot of, you know, Transform your farm's future with premium hybrids, robust data, and unparalleled expertise from Axis Seed Red Barn. We partner with you to customize a plan featuring industry-leading seed that matches your unique soil and growing conditions, helping you to farm differently and making your operation more profitable. Contact us at www.redbarn.ag to gain access to premium seed proven to outperform. And go Beavers! There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas, and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We are more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. s and is proud to be your family, your friends, your neighbor. 
the 0 4 TMP, coached by Grant Stevenson in his first season. He has a 59 and 32 record in his nine overall years as a head coach. A quarterback will be Peyton Schwartz, 155 pound senior. He has thrown 10 of 22 this year, two touchdowns, two picks. Also rushed for three scores. Griffin Shoemaker at a running back spot, 520 rushing yards and nine scores this year. He has also passed one time on a halfback pass for 21 yards. He is a 165 pound senior. The other running back is Adler Brown, a 155 pound junior, two touchdowns. They'll start Max Gerstner at the tailback spot. He is a 155 pound freshman. Also at uh, wide receiver, it's gonna be Caden Dinkle, 155 pound sophomore and another freshman we believe. Logan Ballman, a 165 pound freshman. The center is a sophomore, Eli Stein. He was a left tackle starter a year ago for the Monarchs. He moves to under center. Colton Hagen's a 280 pound senior. Kendall Walker, the 260 pound senior left and right guards. Braden Gilmore, a 200 pound senior. And Ethan Balthazar, a 220 pound senior at right tackle. The defensive line for Scott City, it's going to be Tanner Gooden and Braden Bruner at the D-tackle spots. Case Armanderas and Jackson Rumford are the DNs. Brooks Bailey, Colin McDaniel, their outside backers. Tracer Chapman, Oscar Mendez, your interior backers. Alex Trango, Camden Volgamore, the corners, and the free safety is Avery Knoll. Let's go to your keys to the game. We've already kind of recapped or talked about that earlier, but go back to Skip here for keys to the game, presented by State Farm agent Michael Trout. Again, turnovers. Do not turn the ball over, Scott City. Uh, that's the great equalizer. And other thing is time of possession. Let's get the Monarchs off the field. They like to run the ball. Let's keep the ball out of their hands and get the ball to our playmakers. Get it to Colin, get to Jackson Rumford, get it to whoever, but get them the ball in space and let them do something with it. Uh, TMP did win the toss and deferred, so we're going to get the ball receiving on the north end zone. All right, thank you. Once again, uh, Skip Numery there, keys of the game, presented by State Farm Agent Michael Trout. It's an 85-degree evening here at Darner Field, and light wind out of the northeast, north-northeast this evening. TMP, and they're all white uniforms with those uh, navy blue numbers and letters. They have Monarchs written on the back, the solid white helmets, kind of an old-school look. It's nice and clean. Scott City in their home, uh, dark blue tops, navy blue tops, light blue helmets and pants. SC decal on the right and the jersey number on the left. It'll be kicking off for the Monarchs. Austin Gilbert, two to receive for Scott City in this game's underway. End over and kick. It's going to be taken by Trango to bounce at his 15. Right up the middle, 20, 25, 30, and 35, 37 yard line is where Hill will take it. So a nice gain of about 32 and that sets up the Beavers with good field position at their own 37 yard line. That was a nice return. You know, just let's go north and south and get the ball upfield and get as much out of it as we can and then lower your shoulder and pick up the last couple yards. Good job there. We're here on uh, KSKL Scott City starting a couple minutes before seven. Camden Vogelmore, your junior quarterback, 170 pound junior, 494 yards through the air, 117 on the ground, 84 of those last week in that pistol wing tee handoff left side to Colin McDaniel on first down across the 40. He'll be brought down at about the 42 going left side for a gain of five as it was on the tackle Peyton Schwartz 155 pound senior. That was a nice run there pretty well blocked you know a lot of plays five yards is a, is a good amount you know you get five yards every time you're going to take the ball right down the field. Uh, Baylor Vasquez was starting on a left tackle there and he, he got a nice block. Second down, counterplay right side to Nolan. TMP sniffs this one out. He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And I don't think he did. No, he didn't. He'll lose about a half a yard on the play, setting up a third. Actually, no, no gain. They'll officially say he got back to the line, third and five. Mentioning a little bit about Peyton Schwartz here, he had the fumble return for a touchdown and ended up being the game winner for the Monarchs last week. First minute of the game, no score. The Beavers 50% on third down this year. Now Volgamore rolling to his right. He breaks through one sack attempt, and then he gets tripped up for a loss at the 39-yard line. Tripping up from behind is Ethan Balthazar for a two-yard loss to the 40, they'll say, in Scott City three and out on their opening series for a second straight game. The ball's got to come out on time. We, we had a guy open at the sticks, but uh, Cam waited a little too long, and that, that's something that uh, young quarterbacks just have to get over is – get the ball out on time. All right, back to punt is Jackson Rumford. The junior averages 38 yards of punt. Standing at his own 28, takes the snap from Bre Brevin Volgamore. Boots this one away, a lot of hang time. Waving for the fair catch inside the 20 at the 16. 
by Griffin Shoemaker with 10-17 to go here in a scoreless first quarter. That was a great punt. Yes, it was. Uh, hang time, there was no way he was going to return that. 43-yard punt. Wow. Well, in fact, he made a real good uh, decision to fair catch that. That had uh, about a four to five second hang time on that. Yeah, we could have got down and covered that, Adam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the officially <laughs> spotted at the 18 as TMP moves to the north. They're just into the shade. They'll spread it out with three receivers and two empty backfields. Swing it out, low pass. It hits the turf. You can see the rubber bounce off the turf. It was intended over on the left side that time for Isaac Purrington, the sophomore, second and 10. Well, that's a good place to get TMP is behind the sticks right off the get-go. You know, second and long is a lot easier to defend than when it's second and five. Yep, second and 10, 18-yard line, or 17-yard line, they officially mark it back there. No score, 10-14 to go first quarter. Shoemaker in motion. He'll get the jet sweep right side. Scott said he strings it up nicely, and Tanner Gooden will wrap him up for maybe a gain of a yard to the 18-yard line. Nothing going on the right side of that Monarch line, setting up third and nine. Yeah, Tanner's really improved himself athletically over the years. You know, being a wrestler has helped him uh, develop his football skills. Being a football player has helped develop his wrestling skills. And, and he's one that's really put on a lot of muscle in the weight room over the years. Third down and nine, 18-yard line, 940 to go first quarter, no score. Opponents against Scott City this year are 22% on third down through three games. Twins to left, one to the right, wing to left as they'll roll to left, and now... Looking still as Peyton Schwartz will fire it up for grabs. And this is going to be almost picked off by Avery Knoll, overthrowing the intended receiver at the Brown around the 31 yard line. So TMP goes two pass plays, and it'll be a quick three and out for the Monarchs. Well, there was nobody to throw the ball to on that that was open. We did a very good job of de defending that play. And when you said throw it up for grabs, that was up for grabs. And Avery about to made a really nice play to get an interception. So both teams go three and out on the opening series. It'll be Schwartz, he is their punter. They'll line up like they're gonna go for it and then he'll back up similar to what Cimarron does in their offensive set. He'll take the snap and just quick kick it. He doesn't average a lot, but this is a wobbly kick. Caught by Trango, is on 48, goes across midfield 45 and is inside the 40 to the TMP Marion 38 yard line. On about a 30 yard punt, there is a flag on the far side with 9.17 to go first quarter. Well, I'm afraid where that flag's thrown, it might be holding on us. I hey, hope that's the case. 37 yard line. Rick Armstrong is the official tonight. Don't know what the flag is going to be about, but even if it's on Scott City, they're gonna get some good field position out of it on the, we believe on the plus side of the 50. Yeah, the exchange of possessions have benefited us greatly. All right, holding on uh, Scott City. Penalties really hurt Scott City and last week against Millwood, and especially on when it's a 6 nothing game, you look back and a big penalty in the first quarter wiped off a long touchdown pass play. Now, penalties aren't costly and right up to the point where they are costly. You know, you think, well, this isn't going to cost us much. Well, we don't know that, but ho hopefully we can... Use this good field position to take it on into the end zone. From the Monarch 47, first and 10, it'd be a quarterback sweep for Camden Volgamore left side. Turns it upfield across the 45, and he'll be down to the 42. A gain of five on first down. He'll be upended that time by Caden Dinkle and also Ryan Casey. Casey, second down and five. Good call. You know, when a team's crowded in the line of scrimmage like mm -hmm. this, you know, uh, Misdirection coming back, a counter like we lost yardos on last time. The ball just don't don't work as well. Play fake on second down out to the flats. And that's going to be there all day, that, that it, play. It's called McDaniel it. inside the 30 and down to the 25-yard line on a gain of 17. McDaniel with catch number 10 on the air. That's 17 yards and a Scott City first and 10. You know, Colin kind of reminds me of Wes Welker. Yes. Be, you know, for the Patriots <laughs> and then for the Broncos, extremely quick. Uh, good speed, good hands, and you get the get ball to a guy like that in space, and uh, it's hard to get him down. It sure is, and I mean, he's had an outstanding senior campaign out of that wingback spot. First and 10, 25-yard line, TMP is Tanner Gooden goes to the left tackle spot. Be a counter left side, and McDaniel has a lot of room left side. Sidesteps one inside the 20, and almost breaks it. He'll be 
getting a first down into the Lewis Automotive Red Zone to the 14-yard line, and 11 more for the Beavers on the ground and a first down. That was well executed, a well executed counter trap. Uh, we got everybody blocked. You know, uh, you have to not allow penetration for plays like that to work. And the first time we ran that play going the other way, we, they, TMP got penetration. This time we, we didn't allow the penetration and turned it upfield for 10. Tying the left side, Brooks Bailey, the receiver right here is Nolan, the carry on first down inside the 15. He gets stood up at the line, No, nothing going on that play. It was tackled that time by Ryan Casey. He may have lost about a half a yard, but we'll call it no gain, second and 10. I hate to see runners jump because there is hurdling. Yeah. And, you know, that, that, can, that can be a penalty if you're not careful. Second and 11, Trango split to the right, tied in the right side as well. Here's Volgamort's a quarterback sweep right side, turns it upfield, but meets a great wall right at the line of scrimmage. Is still nothing going. Ryan Casey on the tackle, setting up a third and 10. Well, we're where we don't want to be behind the sticks on third down and, and 10. Uh, Kind of an obvious passing play, you know. We, I wouldn't be surprised to see him to get it, try to get it to Colin in the flat, we run uh, Rumford deep and throw underneath. Scott City missed on their first third down attempt of the game. They'll split two receivers left: McDaniel and Bailey. Rumford to the right, pistol set up with Chapman. Rolling to his left is Volgamore. Finds the flats. There it is with McDaniel. He'll be a yard shy of the first down at the five. He'll be about a half a yard shy. Escorted out of bounds by the safety, Caden Dinkle. It's a gain of nine on third and ten. It'll bring up fourth and a yard. Yeah, TMP is not going to stop that play that we have on one defender out there to guard two receivers. And we had a choice of who to throw to. And you, you know, got safety over the top, but somebody's going to be open underneath. 6.46 here in the first quarter. The clock stopped with the ball going out of bounds. Fourth and about a yard and a half. Scott City this year, 43% on fourth downs. Handed off. This is to Tanner Good, and he gets blown up at the eight-yard line and a loss of two on the play as Kendall Walker just got by the Scott City defense or offensive line and a turnover on downs. Well, that wasn't what we were looking for, I can tell you. No. I like the idea of running straight at him, but... Uh, you might want to block everybody. I mean, there's no reason to have that kind of penetration coming through. So still a scoreless first quarter. Ball will be marked officially at the nine, or just across the eight. First and 10 with 6.29 to go first quarter. Still no score. We go on a lot of quick counts. Yes. It might be to our advantage to make a, a TMP sit in there and, and wait. Maybe we can draw him offside. Kind of a bobbled snap, but a big run on first down through the middle. As that time, it was a gain of about 10 for the first down, and it would be close, so I'll have to bring the uh, chain gang out. They're going to measure. That carry was for the tailback, Max Gerstner, his first carry of the night. They're going to bring the chains out with 6.16 to go first quarter. As that was Noel with the tackle for Scott City, and it is just enough for a first down. Well, we need to stop him here and get him back off the field, get him back off the field and get good field position. But, uh, you know, when you have a turnover on downs like that, mm -hmm. that can be a momentum shift shifter. And, uh, you know, TMP's coming out fired up, pick up the first down. And away they go. Uh, Griffin Edwards in at a linebacker spot. I'm playing right there for uh, Oscar Mendez right now. Just across the 18, first and 10. Halfway mark, first quarter, no score. Two receivers left, one to the right. Handoff goes up the middle. This time, Jackson Rumford tracks down Max Gerstner, drops him for no gain. Maybe about a half yard loss on the play. They'll officially call it no gain, second and 10. We talked about uh, TMP crowding the line. You know, we can do we can do that to them too. I mean, that's a two-edged sword, and uh, I think uh, we have the personnel to b to bottle up their offense. Just everybody doing their job. Yeah, absolutely. Second and ten, 18-yard line for the Monarchs. No score. 5:20 to go, first quarter. They'll have a two-receiver set. The flex bone set. It'll be an option right side. They'll pitch it late. Almost intercepted that. And Colin McDaniel will drop 
Max Gerstner for a loss back at the 16 yard line, make it 17 for a loss of a yard and a half, setting up third and about 12. Well, if you want coaching tips of how to stop the option, that was that was a perfect demonstration. You have the quarterback covered and who, uh, his assignment, and then the pitch man was taken by Colin, and there wasn't anywhere where to go with any of it. 4.45 here in a scoreless first quarter, third and 12, 17-yard line for the Monarchs. A three-receiver set, twins to the left. They'll swing it out. It'll be to Shoemaker. He'll turn it upfield, and he'll try to bounce it outside, but so many blue-shirted beavers there, and it's Case Armanera's dropping him for a two-yard loss back at the 15, and that'll be fourth down and long, and another punt coming up here for the Monarchs. Well, Case did a real nice job of fighting through traffic there and ma making the play. I'm... If he wouldn't have made it, somebody else would have, but it's it's nice to see hustle like that. It ended up being a rush there. It was kind of a backward lateral there. As we approach four minutes to go first quarter, they'll step back in a punt formation Will Peyton Schwartz, who wears number 32 as the quarterback. Here's the kick and almost got it. It's Get a away short from kick. it. This is going to oh. take a bounce. Here's Trango at the 47-yard line down the right sideline. He crossed the 40, and he's tackled that time by... Shoemaker at about the 30, we're marking about the 40 yard line, just about a seven yard return. Alex uh, does a nice job of returning, but a back his size needs to know when to get yeah. down. You stand up like that, and everybody's trying to strip the ball, and they're going to take shots at you. You know, when you're uh, not the biggest guy in the world, sometimes uh, discretion is a better part of valor and go down. We're going to take a 30-second timeout with 3.54 to go first quarter. No score. Back in 30 seconds, this is Beaver football. BBN is brought to you by HRC Feed Yards, JNR, Next Tech Wireless, Red Barn Enterprises, s &T Communications, Scott County Hospital, Scott Co-op, Security State Bank. Three fifty-four to go, first quarter, no score. Scott City's third possession. They drove the ball inside the Monarch ten on their first series. A turnover on downs on fourth down, and Coach Jim Turner really trying to fire up his team. Called the timeout to get that line fired up and get that offense fired up as well. Yeah, I know my blood pressure's gone down since I've quit <laughs> coaching. Uh, it's funny how that works. Yeah. Here we go at the Monarch 40 right hash mark. It'll be a carry up the middle. This is to Griffin Edwards as a flag comes out, and that'll be about a four-yard gain, which indicates holding on the Beavers. Yeah, um, where that flag was thrown, I'd be surprised if there's anything else. Well, we have a little break in the action. Mm -hmm. Shout out to our volleyball team. Uh, they went to Cimarron yesterday and uh, beat Cimarron two games to none, and then they beat Holcomb uh, two out of three. So congratulations, Coach Robinson. Next Thursday, they're going to be home against Ulysses and, uh, and Hugotson. So come out and watch the volleyball team play at the dam. That's right. Uh, Ulysses and Scott City Volleyball, they're the lone undefeated teams in the league. It's a 10-yard penalty from the – that should be a line of scrimmage penalty. Or is it a chop block? Uh, it would I, have to be a chop block. I didn't see what the signal was. So I guess it's first and – Six or 14. It has to be a chop block. And first and four, 24 from the 46. Here's McDaniel across midfield, and he will take it to the 46 yard line. That is a gain of about eight on first down. And, and there is Peyton Schwartz with a tackle on a gain of eight. Well, it looks like to me that the, the, the left, the right side of the TMP defense is where we want to run. Uh, we've had a lot more success going mm -hmm. that way than than anywhere else. It was a nice kick out block. Colin read the block well, turned it upfield, and lowered his shoulder. You know, that was a nice pickup. You know, what nine yards there? Yeah, second down and 16 as we approach three minutes to go. First quarter, no score. They have Hunter Mark now at right tackle for the Beavers. Is now Colin McDaniel line up as a slot receiver to the right. They have five to snap it. They'll send Nolan motion. Vogelmore takes a snap as he rolls to his right. A lot of pressure right away. He looks downfield, just has to chuck it away. Breathing down the backside that time was Austin Gilbert setting up third and 16. I'm not sure everybody ran the correct route there. 
There was a it seemed like a lot of confusion from the beginning. And we need to get rid of the ball faster. I mean, when mm -hmm. when the quarterback's rolling out and he goes 30 yards, somebody's going to they have time to pick up coverage if they blew it earlier. Now, you know, here we are again, third and long, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot with a penalty. So third down and 16, Scott City 0-2 on third down. Scoreless here with 2.52 to go third quarter. Play fake for Volgamore has time to step up. He has uh, Brooks Bailey and over throws it and or under throws him and almost intercepted that time. Well, we can say he underthrew Brooks or he overthrew uh, Jackson Rumford, one of the two. It was right in the dead zone between them. And unfortunately for the Beavers, they are unable to take advantage of having the ball on the plus side of the 50. A penalty sets him back in another or second can consider to three and out as the Beavers will punt for the second time this quarter. You know, I'm sure TMP is just going to be willing to sit back and wait till they get some, get some breaks. You know, we haven't proved that we can oh, almost got that punt block. That was the official said it was deflected, but it gets a nice roll inside the 15 and rolls out of bounds at about the 13 yard line. Ends up being a 33 yard punt with 235 to go first quarter. Uh, that was uh, nearly disaster, and there's, you know, the break that maybe TMP is looking for a block of a punt. Hey. Well, I see Baylor Vasquez, the human detour sign, is a <laughs> defensive tackle. He's in there, yeah, that 320-pound junior defensive lineman in there. Yeah, you know, Baylor has quick feet, you know. Yes. If he could lose a few more pounds he could and where he could play stay on the field for a number of plays he could he can be a real force and we're down already 235 here in this scoreless first quarter TMP really taking their time in the huddle they have eight to snap it as they break the huddle with six and rub to line you know this is going to be snapped in a hurry Stevenson thinking about calling a timeout and they just got the playoff in time, and it's a handoff right side to Shoemaker, Griffin Edwards, and also in on the tackle that time was Colin McDaniel for maybe about a yard or two yards to the 16, setting up second down and eight. Well, that was about a disaster for TMP because that ball was on the ground. It, it was fumbled. And uh, that was about as good an outcome as TMP could hope for on that play. <laughs> it was almost like there was the halfback fumble Ruski on that because it <laughs> dropped right in front of Shoemaker. <laughs> Uh, they might have been better off, better served just calling timeout and cut, instead of running up to the line of scrimmage and trying to, to rush through something. Second and eight, 16 yard line under two to go. They'll run it right side. Nope, option keeper pitching it late and turning it upfield is going to be Shoemaker. Gets tackled forward to about the 21 yard line by Tracer Chapman. Five more on second down, sets up third and three. That was a good, uh, good, ex well executed play. Uh, that TMP stayed on their blocks just long enough to, you know, to pick up five or six yards. Nice pitch, nice reads all along by the quarterback. And as we mentioned, third down and three. TMP so far on third down today, 0 for 2. Beavers trying to get another defensive stop here, get their second three and out of the game. Yeah, let's go for 0, 0 and 3 on third down. I'd take that. And then block a punt. Monarchs have five to snap it as they send two receivers left, one to the right, flex bone set. And they send a That's, man in motion. He was moving forward to the quarterback, snap, wasn't he? Keeper, it was close. They'll say that quarterback, or the stop is a yard shy of the first down at the 23. I think it was the, the Peyton, Peyton Schwartz was the quarterback keeper. I was right on that. So it's a fourth and a yard at the 20. Three yard line. Well, everybody should be w yelling, watch the ball, watch the ball. Don't jump off sides and give them the first down. 35 seconds here to go first quarter. Let's see what TMP does on fourth and a yard. Oh, that's a bad snap and it goes inside the 10 and they have to fall on it at the five yard line. Maybe a little miscommunication that time. Schwartz falls on it and I don't know if they were trying to go for it on fourth down, but Scott said he will take it. I, I, if they were going for that on fourth down, that was not a, probably the, the, the best choice that, that, that they could have made. I mean, we're shooting ourselves in the foot on offense. Now they give us the ball on the five-yard line. You know, worst case scenario, we're going to come out of this with a field goal attempt. First and goal for the Beavers. They absolutely need to take advantage of this at the five. It's and We're unbalanced to the right. Handoff here is going to be... 
Avery, no, lowers his shoulder, gets across the goal line. Or No, they're going to say his knee was down at the one-yard line. He had the ball across the goal line. The official had the view on the side, said his knee was down before the ball crossed the goal line. Well, his helmet yeah. was definitely across. Yeah. Whether the ball wasn't all that mess, I don't know. But uh, I haven't seen us go unbalanced very often, but uh, it was a good time to do it. And TMP didn't really get slid over enough, to, so we had a man advantage over there have it now too. Oh, they won't get the snap off in time as that's the first quarter comes to an end. For a second straight week, Scott City is scoreless, this time with TMP Marion. No score as we head to the second. We'll come back in one minute for second and goal. This is Beaver Football. Trying to break the seal on the score. Where are we at on about the four inch yard line? Adam? I think I see maybe a couple of the uh, turf blades there between the football and the goal line. Here's a keeper, Camden Volgamore dives in. Touchdown, Scott City. Well, the touchdown drought ends after five quarters. Yes. First play of the second quarter, Camden Volgamore, this first career rushing touchdown of the year. The first rushing touchdown of the year, and the Beavers, as we mentioned, strike first, six to nothing. It'll be Junior Mesa to kick the extra point, and he is had a pretty good year, five of six. Holder will be McDaniel. Snap is good, place down. The kick is up, and it is going to be wide to the right, no good. Look like the laces were to the side, way, side there. But more importantly, Scott City is on the board first. Six to nothing they lead. Opening seconds of period two. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. This is Beaver Football. Platinum H Insurance reminds farmers of an important date. <laughs> At American Implement, we know that our farmers and ranchers are getting up and going to work every morning to provide food, fuel, and fiber for the world. And even though time and technology keeps us constantly changing, one thing will always remain the same. We promise that we'll continue working right beside you. We appreciate all that you do for our country and our communities. From all of us at American Implement, thank you. And may God bless the American farmer and rancher leads a Goodland after the first quarter. That's in district play 7-0 up in Goodland. Here's a kick by Jackson Rumford. Angle left. Griffin Shoemaker will take it, bobble it, pick it up at his 5. 10, right oh, sideline, 15, 20. He'll look out, 25, 30. 35 and across the 40 to the 41-yard line. The touchdown saving tackle for Alex Trango on a 36-yard kickoff return. Every coach says on kickoff, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. And when you start detouring around the block instead of through the block and get out of your lane, that's what's going to happen. And this is by far TMP's best field position. Their first three drives 
were inside their own 20 at their own 17, 09, and own 14. They're at their own 41 yard line. Scott City with the lead, six to nothing. As we watch this a little bit more, you think TMP may be doing kind of what Scott City does get up to the line late in the play clock and snap the ball quicker, not be able to line up in their formation. This will be a handoff up the middle on the option. They get it to the tailback Gerstner, and he has swallowed up immediately for a loss of about a yard of the 40 yard line. And right there was Tanner Gooden to meet him in the hole. Well, I hope this doesn't turn out to be a replay of last year's game with TMP where we had. All the, all the yards in the world, and, and TMP couldn't get a first down, and we go into the fourth quarter tied 14 to 14 because they returned a fumble and had a kickoff return. And we let's get, off, get them off the field and score another touchdown and put this to bed. Absolutely, second and 12, 39 yard line. Six nothing Scott City, first minute of the second quarter. TMP was seven to snap it as they run two receivers left, one to the right. Peyton Schwartz, the senior quarterback. He'll roll to his left on second down, steps up, fires it, passes too far in front of the intended receiver. They were looking for Griffin, Shoemaker out of the backfield at midfield, kind of in the middle of his own coverage, it looked like, setting up third and 12. Well, he, was, he was open because of the, the defender for Scott City took a bad angle. Instead of staying with him, he kind of broke it across the field, and it would have had to have been a, a perfectly thrown ball, but uh, it could have been done. Uh, TMP is one of those teams that mentioned 75-25 pass run. They, they're about even, or it's almost like 60-40 here, but. Well, they're going to have yeah. to throw the ball to, to move it on us. Well, they, I'm not about that. We're, we're doing a pretty good job of, of controlling the line of scrimmage. Empty backfield, back to pass, stepping up, firing it down the seat. Pass is going to be caught for a first down through juggle. It was almost intercepted by Bailey, and somehow, Hanging on to it was Adler Brown at the 44 of Scott City on a gain of 17. I'm going to chalk that up to an outstanding catch. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. there, the coverage was there, and sometimes the receiver just comes down with the ball d despite everything. And I thought we had it intercepted, but the re I think the receiver kind of took it away from our, uh, the defender there. But good, good for him. 44-yard line of Sky City. First time the Monarchs have snapped the ball in Beaver territory. They'll run a jet sweep left side to Brown, and he will get maybe a yard out of it to the 43. Colin McDaniel with the tackle. Second down and nine coming up as we approach 10-20 to go first half. Pretty good job there defensively, maintaining our, our lanes. You know, good teams are going to pick up a couple yards on you. Now back to work. Yeah. Second and nine. This is the first trip for TMP to Scott City since 2012. That's when both teams were in the same district in 3A. That's back when teams were only four teams in a district. Ten to snap at this time. Shoemaker motion. They'll run the counter left side to Brown again. He has some room, and he will be near a first down to the 35-yard line. Give him eight on second down. Alex Trango with the tackle, setting up a third and short one. Hmm. Well, that was well-executed counter on, on TMP. Fake, fake right, run it back to the left, get a couple blocks, hand it to a back that can, can do something with the ball, and here we go. That was third and one. That's kind of the same place Scott City likes to run. Yep. Third and a yard, 35-yard line. It'll be just up the middle for Schwartz. He's got a first down inside the 25 and takes it to the 23-yard line. Avery Knoll. And also in on the tackle or Colin McDaniel right up the gut for 12 and a first down. Yeah, you don't see too many quarterback sneaks from the shotgun gain 11 yards right up the middle. They have converted back to back third downs on this drive and they have it at the 23 of Scott City down six. Now you notice the TMP's taking a lot of time off the play clock. They want to, you know, shorten the possessions. You know, so where you don't get the ball as many times during the course of a game, which is, is smart. Six nothing the Beavers lead, but TMP driving and a nice drive that started at their own 40. They'll run option play. They'll pitch it over to Brown and Scott City defends this one well. Good job on the outside that time. Brooks Bailey, also Keith Armanderas, dropping Adler Brown for a loss of a yard to the 25, setting up second and 11. Well, now we got him in the second and long. And, and, uh, you need to take advantage of that. Absolutely. Ain't play of the drive coming up here. No, it's little, little things in games. Uh, you miss an extra point. You give up a, a long kickoff return. And, you know, you know, momentum is a fickle thing. And when you've got it, you want to keep it. 
Two receivers to the right. Flexbone set up on second down. They'll toss it right side. Here's a halfback pass. They're going for the end zone. Out of the back of the end zone. Diving catch just outside. Looking for the intended receiver that time, Caden Dinkle. But it was beyond the back line of the end zone, setting up third and 11. Uh, Camden Volgamore did a nice job of, of staying with that. Uh, it, maybe there was a half step difference, but uh, Cam read the play pretty well, and it had to have been a perfect throw and a really good catch to, for them to score on that. Now we got him in third and long. And, you know, I would be ready for anything. So they do say third and 10, actually. 24 yard line of Scott City with 802 to go first half. Empty backfield, they'll send a man in motion. Brown, play fake, rolling to his right is Swartz. Sets up, fires, passes, picked off by Brooks Bailey. Hey, correction, that, yeah, it is Bailey. He has a second career pick, and the Beavers get a much needed turnover via an interception. <laughs> well, Brooks missed the first one, but he didn't make any mistake with, with that. Uh, one, one thing that really helped us there, J uh, Jackson Rumford didn't lose contain, so when the quarterback couldn't, could, didn't have as much time maybe to throw as he would have liked, rolling out to, to his right, our defense is left. Now, Brooks Bailey had an interception on varsity last year at Ray in the second half. His first pick of the year sets up the Beavers at their own 15. Option play. Volgamore will pitch it late to every no, and that was just going nowhere. That was defended well. No will lose two back to the 13-yard line. That was a bad decision. Uh, there wasn't much to be had there. Sometimes as a quarterback, you just need to, to turn it upfield and make the best out of, out of a bad situation. Um, Fortunately, there was a good pitch, and Avery held on to the ball, but uh, that was fraught with danger. Yep, second and dozen at their own 13. The Beavers moving to the north in the second quarter, up six to nothing. Empty backfield as Volgamore back to pass. Fire crossing pattern. Here's Colin McDaniel across the 20. Side steps 25. He's going to have a first down all the way up to the 28-yard line. He'll gain 15 on the crossing pattern, and it's a first and 10 for the Beavers, they'll say, to the 29. That that pattern, or pattern similar to that are going to be there all night. You know, TMP's bringing pressure, run underneath, get the ball to a, a, a receiver like Colin and he, in space, and he's, we're going to make that work all night long if we just stick with it. 29-yard line, first and 10. They'll swing it out. Here's a little tunnel screen. This is Alex Trango across the 30. He's right down, wrapped up there by Max Gerstner, but not before a gain of about 8 to the 37, setting up second and short. You know, a quick throw like that's really just a, a fancy running play. You get the ball out quick, get some linemen in front of him, and Frango makes the catch and gets it upfield, you know, gaining almost eight yards. That's, that's a pretty good first down play. 6.40 to go, second quarter, 6 nothing. Scott said the Beavers two and a half yards away from another first and 10. They're at their own 36 and a half yard line. It'll be an option play this time. A good pitch to Colin McDaniel. Has room on the left side. Trying to turn it upfield. Does so across the 40. He'll be brought down by the safety. Caden Dinkle at the 42-yard line on a gain of six. And it's a first and 10 chain mover for the Beavers. I like the way Colin runs. Colin's not yes. looking for a place to go out of bounds. He's not looking for a place to, to take a knee. He's looking to turn the ball upfield and get as much out of it as he can. And I think, you know, every play he'd like to score. And that, that's a good attitude to have. I'll give him a gain of seven of the 43, first and 10. And nearing the midway point of the first half, five play drive for the Beavers, up six to nothing. Here's Avery Knoll, and he'll turn it up for about two to the 45-yard line on first down as Griffin Shoemaker underneath the pile with the tackle. I'm slightly disappointed that we're not doing a better job running the ball straight at him. But I'm going to give TMP credit here because they've got some pretty tough interior linemen oh. that have some size. So, you know, maybe people say, well, you can't run up the middle. Well, they're not. They're pretty good up there. 260 up and 280 on second down. Here's screen. Oh, screen. And Camden Volgamore has no chance. He gets blown up inside the 40. They'll mark him all the way back at the 34-yard line for a loss of 11. We, we, Shoemaker with the sack. We can't be the kind of team we want to be making those kind of mistakes. Yeah, but that's one of those tough ones. Re nobody really engaged that long for Scott City up on the line, and it well, was just an all-out blitz. Everybody needs to get rid of it. Yeah, that's absolutely right. A tough one there for the Beavers. Third and long with five minutes to go first half. Oh, of three on third downs, and now under pressure off the edge. 
Volgamore trying to step up and throw it, and he gets hit as he throws it. It's a jump ball situation on the edge, and almost made the making the catch inbounds. Noel had it, but he had one foot out of bounds at the 36-yard line of TNP. A good effort, though, but the Beavers go backwards on that set of downs, and they'll be forced to punt for the third time tonight. Well, you're just not going to pick up fourth and 20. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But he did make a nice catch. It just didn't yes. come down with a foot inbounds. I think that was the right call. Shoemaker standing at his own 30-yard line to return this kick. Good snap here to run for this time. Boots this one away. Great hang time. Shoemaker has to wait for the fair catch and does so at his own 31-yard line. A 35-yard punt. No return with 448 here. Second quarter, 6 nothing. Scott City. Shoemaker's got nice hands. I like the way he sets up and makes those fair catches. You know, the, it just looks like he's going to make the play. It doesn't, I mean, there's no, doesn't look like there's a chance of him bobbling it even. And that was about three, three and a half second hang time on that punt. Yeah. Jackson's doing a nice, we got everybody blocked and we got the punt off safely that time too. That helps. He's been a pretty outstanding punter for Scott City this year. That was only his ninth attempt of the year. Well, I don't hope he doesn't have any more attempts I, this game. I, I'm with you there. <laughs> First and 10 for the Monarchs. They have it at their own 31 left hash mark. Their uh, flex bone set. They'll run it to Brown on the left side on first down. He'll turn it upfield. He'll get about three to the 34 on first and 10. Rumford in on the tackle, setting up second and seven. A nice job defensively. The yeah, our defense is playing pretty well tonight. Yes, they you know, are. The TMP did have a little bit of a drive, but, you know, we could have had an interception early in that drive that uh, TMP just player made just a great catch on so uh, yeah Tra yeah tracer chapman was also in on that last tackle second and seven 34 yard line two receivers to the right it'll be a play fake they'll swing it out and to brown and good job by mcdaniel and he gets two points for the double leg takedown of the 32 for a loss of two setting up a third and nine well that wasn't just a nice tackle that was a great job playing off the block in space getting off the block and then making the tackle that was a good double leg blast there. <laughs> you know, we've seen that during wrestling since right. a time or two, haven't we? Yes. Third down and nine. 340 here in the first half. Six nothing Scott City. TMP is two of six on third downs here tonight as they have 12 to snap it. It'll be their ball to begin the second half. Beavers trying to get a three and out here. Brown in motion, play fake, rolling Pass. to his right is Schwartz. Now has all kinds of trouble. Pass is going to be incomplete. We do have a flag thrown, two flags thrown. They, we, they have an offensive lineman downfield. Yeah. Well, I mean, not just downfield, yes. 10 yards downfield. Uh, you know, when you're 6'3", 280, you're a pretty easy target to see. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an incomplete and a three and out for the Beaver defense. I think it's going to be an eligible man downfield, we assume. Well, unless there's offsetting penalties of some, some crazy thing. But, yep. yeah, we're, that's what it is. Oh, they had holding. Well, I don't know. It holding, my, my, mm, you want to get the ball. Yeah, they're going to decline that. And a good three and out for the Scott City defense. And we're going to get the ball at a pretty good field position here. Uh, you know, assuming a 35-yard a punt, we're going to get the ball somewhere around the 45-yard line with a 25- or 10-yard return. Fourth down coming up here. Schwartz will be back to punt, standing at his own 24-yard line. Here's the kick, and it's blocked. The kick is blocked. That time, Avery Noel blocked the punt and recovers it at the 23-yard line of TMP. Well, big play. Now let's have our offense take advantage of it. Yeah, we're talking to Caesar Peregrino the other night. He, he has been so close all year to blocking punts. He was right there, but Noel is going to be credited for the blocked punt that time, and the Beavers recover in the plus side of the 50. I tried real hard to get Caesar to come out for football in middle school. And yeah. Much to my chagrin, he didn't. But he, when he was, became in ninth grade, maybe it was me he didn't like. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but it's good to see him out there yes, this yeah. year. He's been a good addition to the team. The 23 of the Monarchs, Chapman in that tailback position, 10 to snap at Volgamore on first down, fires it down the seam for Avery Noel, makes a catch inside the 10. He'll be tackled near the five, or almost tackled, slow down at the six yard line. But a nice seam pattern of 17 yards, and Beavers are in the Lewis Automotive red zone. Nice throw. Nice throw, nice catch. The ball was thrown on time. 
I, half the se secret of playing good quarterback mm -hmm. is getting rid of the ball on time. Uh, so let's see what if we can punch it in. From the six, first and goal, Beavers. They'll run speed option right side. This is Volgamore. He'll keep it. He'll turn it up field, and he's bounced into the end zone. Touchdown, Scott City. Camden Volgamore, second rushing touchdown of the night. This one from six yards out, and the Beavers double up their lead with 2.44 to go first half. Well, they got to the corner so clean that time that the pitch man actually turned up field and blocked for Camden. And... And Camden put his shoulder down and got that last yard. There wasn't going to be any stopping him there. Scott City will go for two. From the three-yard line with 2.44 to go first half. Beavers this year on two-point conversions have been pretty good, just one of two. They're running option left side. McDaniel has it, and he is going to be – oh, they're going to give it to him. Oh, well, there's no doubt there, Adam. Yeah. What do you mean? He was, uh, let's not go to instant replay. Let's <laughs> That's right. They'll say the two-point conversion is good, and the Beavers are now up 14 to nothing with 2.44 to go first half. We'll come back in 30 seconds for the kickoff. This is Scott City Football. At Red Barn Enterprises, we're not here just to sell you seats. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations that our Scott City Optometry Office specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and we are committed to improving the quality of life. Give yourself the gift of clear vision by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden, OD, today. Scott City takes advantage of a block pump by Avery Noel. Two plays, 23 yards. Cam DeVolgamore runs it in on the right side from six yards out, and then it was Colin McDaniel on the option pitch to left, runs it in for the two-point conversion as Scott City gets the points back, leading 14 to nothing, 2.44 to go first half. Football presented by Scott County Hospital, Scott Cooperative Association, Scott County Abstract and Title Company, Scott Community Foundation, as well as Scott City Pharmacy and Giftologist. Jackson Rumford at the 40-yard line, boots this one away. High end over and kick. It'll be taken by the quarterback. Peyton Schwartz takes it across the 20 to about the 23-yard line on about a 17-yard return. I was watching our guys run downfield that time, and they did a very good job of staying in their lanes. And you can see the difference. What was interesting about that, Skip, as Peyton Schwartz was not in on that, or not to Peyton Schwartz, I beg your pardon, Griffin Shoemaker was not in on that kickoff return. He's been one of those that does everything for the Monarchs. He is on the sideline without a helmet right now. Oh, well, that's a big... Uh, big good event in this game absolutely so they put in we'll get to that here in a moment on first down it'd be the freshman up the middle the tailback gets nice yardage on first down of about six to the 29 that being max gerstner tmp will burn one of their three timeouts we'll come back and talk a little bit more here about this second and four 14 nothing beavers as there's his injured monarch as well 228 to go second quarter we'll be back in 30 seconds this is beaver football Women in every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinics, skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in healthcare. Prices on Valspar paint are falling at Scott County Lumber. Right now, Scott County Lumber has prices on Valspar yeah, paint. Yeah, we can make it a minute here. That's fine. Paints like Valspar medallion interior and exterior, color style and climate zone. The cooler temps make it the best time to paint before winter with Valspar medallion or climate zone house paint. With several finishes and many colors yep, bring it back. to choose from. Pick up on falling Valspar paint prices today at Scott County Lumber, where they always help you get it done with excellence. Back here at Darner Field in Scott City, the injured monarch, Ethan Balthazar, their 6'2", 220-pound senior right tackle, and they've already lost, we believe right now, Shoemaker. They put in at that one halfback position or wingback position, 
Derek Becker, 5'10", 140-pound sophomore. He's at the left halfback position. Play resumes second down and four, 29-yard line with 2.24 to go second quarter. Flexbone set. That'll be Brown in motion left. They'll give him the toss left side. Scott said he's trying to string it out well, and they do. Tanner Gooden tracks him down from behind for a loss on the play at about the 22-yard line. He'll lose a correction, 28-yard line, a loss of a yard. We came up and, and, and stuffed that play very well. A good, aggressive play from our outside linebacker. Coach Jim Turner burning the second of his third time, or three timeouts lot in the half with 2.11 to go, and he's got to be thinking here with a third down coming up here at the 27-yard line, third and six, after that two-yard setback, that Scott said he needs to get the ball back here and get one more score before halftime. Well, you, you know, we have a, a good matchup on the outside when we split Jackson Rumford out wide. I mean, he's 6'5", going up against a defensive back that's 5'9", and we uh, on a jump ball situation with Jackson's hands, he's got a good chance of coming down with it. And uh, to say nothing of blocking a punt again. Uh, yeah. So it's third down and six coming up at the 27 yard line. Hugo Den was leading Colby up at Denon Field seven to six after the first quarter. And that's a District 8 matchup in 3A. Also, it was Holcomb seven, Goodland nothing after the first quarter up in Goodland. Of course, Scott said he heads down to Hugo Den next week. Don't forget two weeks, Scott City's next home game. It's going to be a Saturday night, 6 o'clock game with Holcomb here. So that's in two weeks. Saturday night live. Yeah, huh? how about that? Third down in about 7, 27 yard line. Third and six, excuse me. They'll run a counter left side as a flag comes out. Brown will get the first down to the 35. But this one was a quick thrown flag right at the point of attack. And that indicates a hold. I think without a doubt it's holding. I've been wrong before. Well, that's even worse. That's a chop block. So you have a guy going high and another guy uh, going low, and that's worse than holding a <laughs> 15-yard penalty. Some of the chop blocks are just kind of accidental, really. Uh, but it's a point of emphasis on player safety. Mm -hmm. And what that does, that wipes away a nice run of nine for Adler Brown, and that's a 15-yard variety, taking it all the way back to the 12-yard line, setting up third and 21. I don't mean to be cruel, but TMP yeah. is just not set up to make a third and 20 pickup. I mean, they, it's just not their, their personnel. No. I mean, but they've got some freshmen and young, young kids that in a couple years are going to be dangerous. They'll send Caden Dinkle wide to the right, a man in motion is Brown. They'll run an option pass play. They'll pitch to the right side, and this is going to be upended by McDaniel, and another double leg tick down inside the 10. Five more yards loss as they tackle Becker back at the seven-yard line, and Coach Jim Turner will burn his final time out of the first half with 1.35 to go. That was a double leg takedown and return to the mat safely. Yes, <laughs> perfect. We'll take another 30-second timeout. This is Beaver football. 30 seconds, please. Tonight here by Scott City Ice Center Road and Bean Green Agency, Richards Financial Services, our brothers Auto Body Mechanic, Precision Ag and Seed, Pokey Feeders, Platinum H Insurance, Plain Jans, New Life Market, and Order Supply, Miller Veterinary Clinic, Midwest Mixer, Metzger Appraisals, Metzger Family Farms, McCarty Family Farms, and Low Tree Farms and Livestock. Adam Kadavy, Skip Numerick with you here from Darner Field in Scott City. 14-0 Beaver lead with 135 to go first half. Scott City now out of timeouts, but should get excellent field position when play resumes. And the clock stops on first downs also. That's right. Go back to that uh, two-point conversion. Jackson Rumford did a really nice job maintaining his block on the corner just long enough for the play to work. Absolutely. With fourth and about friend to go for the first down, TMP more than likely will punt out of this. Scott City has Brooks Bailey and Alex Trango inside of Monarch territory. 
as the quarterback Schwartz is about a yard deep in the end zone. That one's partially deflected by Noel. He's in there again, and it goes out of bounds. It, just across the 30, they'll be marked. Oh, they're going to give him the 33-yard line. Ends up being a 26-yard punt with six seconds off the clock. 129 to go first half. Well, there's plenty of time. TMP only punted four times coming into tonight. And they have punted four times in the first half. The Beavers have scored on two play drives and two of their last three possessions coming into this one. Can they get one more score before the second quarter comes to an end? And, and, and if TMP drops back, you know, we can, we've run the option for, fairly well at times tonight. Five to snap it, two receivers to the right. Receiver left, here's Volgamore rolling well, he, to his well, right on first open, down. Throw he's got it. Noel and it's gonna be underthrown and intercepted at the seven yard line. He underthrew that. And Scott City with their first turnover of the night. Oh, he was open too. You know, that there's another time when the ball just wasn't thrown on time. You know, there's there's such a reluctance to throw the ball early uh, for young quarterbacks. But he was open early, just leading to the outside. Caden Dinkle with his third pick in as many, or in four games this year. And TMP will have it at their own eight-yard line with 122 to go first half. And... With them being down 14 nothing, getting the ball here to begin the second half, you've got to wonder maybe they'll just try to keep this on the ground. Well, if they don't, you have a new slash. Well, McDaniel will make the tackle at the nine-yard line, about a gain of a yard officially that time for the ball carrier in Derek Becker. And so second down and nine. Scott City out of timeouts, but there's been some good things. There's been some tough things, and I tell you what, TMP Marion, they're 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 not a bad team. No, they're they're not not, and they're 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 playing hard, and you know, people aren't just going to come in here and let us push them around. Second down carry for Max Gerstner by Jackson Rumford right at the line of scrimmage, the nine. That'll be the final play of this first half. So Gerstner with a six carry for 13 yards. Scott City. More than likely take a 14-0 lead in the locker room, third and nine at the nine-yard line. They don't have to snap it. And they the, won't. The middle school to high school band members will be performing at halftime here at Darner Field, and TMP is just in their huddle there. They're not going to run a snap here. And the teams will head to the locker room. All 14 points for the Beavers in this second quarter. It'll be TMP's ball in the second half to begin. Well, we, yeah. we, we've shown that we can do a lot of things, but we've also shown that we're not consistent. That's been kind of the MO in this first half once again for a second game. But Scott City with a 14-0 lead over TNP as the teams head to their respective locker rooms here at Darner Field. We'll step aside and take a three-minute break. We'll come back with your scoring summary and more. This is Scott City Beaver Football. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org.
Excellent SCHS Marching Band. Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. BBN is brought to you by American Implement, All in One Wash, BH Paving, Fairly Company, Faro Heating and Cooling, First National Bank, Great Western Tire, Harris Chiropractic. Alternative. <laughs> yeah, it's better than not winning, right? All right. We will take our final break of this first half, uh, three-minute breaks. 14-0 Scott City. We'll run down some scores across the league and across the state here as we head to our final three-minute break here in your Precision Ag and Seed Halftime Show. This is Beaver Football. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Chaplin at Chaplin Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Chaplin Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. <music> Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City. The world needs more farmers. People who know the land. People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We are Volgamore Family Farms.
Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with a knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at wsbks.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC, and as always, go Beaver! Your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. It's time for the Precision Ag and Seed Halftime Show. Precision Ag and Seed is a proud supporter of all Scott City activities. As we're winding down our halftime here, 14 0 for Scott City over the TMP Marion Monarchs here. The final non district game of the year for both of these teams. TMP will be back into district or will begin district play. They'll be at neighboring Russell next Friday while Scott City will head down to Hugoton. Let's take a look at scores in the Great West Activity Conference here in the first half. Halftime at Denon Field and Colby in the Battle of the Eagles. It's Hugoton 14, Colby 6. Yeah, I, I picked the Eagles to win that one, Skip. <laughs> They don't call you the boy genius for nothing, Adam. <laughs> and the, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're right. <laughs> At Cowboys Stadium in Goodland, it's Holcomb 21, Goodland nothing. And about to the end of the first half in Lakin, a lot of points for both sides. Lakin is threatening to score inside the five-yard line. They are up on Cimarron 20 to 12. So that was a good game between those two, but Lakin about to score, and Ulysses making the long trip across the state of Kansas to Chanute tonight to take on the Comets, and they're playing tough there. They're only down 7 to nothing at halftime, and I know Ulysses has struggled this year, but playing Chanute, a, a team that's been pretty good in 4 over the last few years to hang tough with them. Boy, don't they have to drive forever to play Ulysses? Yes. I, I, I feel for them uh, some of their road trips. I agree. Some 3A scores as well of interest. Cheney over Pratt, 28-0 at the break. Andale right now blasting Smoky Valley, 58-0. Marysville over Concordia, 10-0. Holton over Perry LeCompton, 32-6. Iola and a baseball shutout, 2-0 over <laughs> Anderson County. Yeah, how about that? No hitter. No hitter going. And Larned leads Nickerson. That's a non-district 2A versus 3A, 26-12. And Abilene in a non-district game and a big rivalry game with Chapman. The Cowboys lead the Fighting Irish by the count of 26 to nothing. Here it's 14 nothing. What would you like to see as we begin the second half here, Skip? Oh, no mistakes, no penalties, good blocking, good tackling, just fundamental football. We don't have to do anything fancy. It's the, the little things, the block that gets made or doesn't get made, the, uh, the throw that gets made on time or one that doesn't get made on time. But, you know, we're, we're playing hard. If we just can do without the mistakes, you know, let's let's start this with the kickoff. Everybody in their lane, kick it deep. Away we go. And we'll kick it from south to north. Scott City thinking they were kicking with their wind at their back, and well, or from the north to south. The wind is very light and really not a big yeah, factor in this game. But TNP will defend the north end zone to begin this third 12 minutes of play. Well, it was our choice. What oh, TMP had the choice, and they elected obviously elected to re, re, receive. But then we had the choice of which end of goal we we're going to defend. So I guess we're going to have the wind at, at our back in the fourth quarter. It'd be Austin Gilbert deep to return. I believe that's Gilbert standing at his own 10-yard line. Not too many teams just have one deep to return. This is a run for kick, a nice inner kick. This will be returned on a couple of bounces, scooped up by Gilbert at the 12, goes right side, and Couchman and Brooks Bailey, and they may get a face mask out of that at about the 18-yard line. Boy, I, I, I didn't, don't see that. I don't know what they could possibly call. Well, they're talking it over. It's just the five-yard variety, I believe. But we'll see. Nonetheless, it's a penalty against Scott City, and Monarchs will not have to snap it inside their own 20. Well, it's good coverage, good aggressive coverage. Absolutely. You know, maybe his hand touched the face mask, but that's not grasping the face mask. No, you're right. Uh, Third penalty for Scott City, 30 yards. It's just the five-yard variety. 23-yard line for the, or make that 22-yard line for the Monarchs. Their opening drive of the second half and a 14-0 Scott City lead. 
Well, our defensive ends, Rumford and Armanderas, need to get off, get off the ball and play hard. Man in motion, that's Brown. It'll be a quarterback sweeper left side. Uh -oh. And over to the left side, across the 25, across the 30 with the first down is the quarterback, Peyton Schwartz, to the 35-yard line on a gain of 13, his best run of the night. Well, that's not the, <laughs> the play we were looking for there, obviously. No. That was blocked well in the point of attack as well. Maybe Scott City kind of bid on the fake on the option on the up the middle look like. Uh, yes, they did. Uh, it gets goes back again to everybody do your job. You know, if your job's outside contain, outside contain. Twin receivers the right, one's the left, an empty backfield from the 35. And a bad snap by snap ball is loose on the turf and Schwartz has to fall in it back at the 28 yard line. A loss on the play of about seven. And Scott said he had that covered quickly with Case Armanderas, and it's going to bring up second and 17. Thank you, TMP. I mean, that's, that's one of the drawbacks of being in a shotgun, second. obviously. Yes. You know, and uh, let's give TMP some credit. I mean, there are times when they've blocked plays exceptionally well, and they have some pretty good backs that have some quickness and speed. Second and 17, 28 yard line. First minute of this second half plus 14 nothing. Scott City twin receivers to right. A man of motion from left to right. It'll be a counter play left side to Adler Brown. And he gets maybe to the 29 yard line for a gain of a yard. And on the tackle from behind there on second down, it looked like that was Tracer Chapman. Maybe make it Caden Couchman setting up third down and 16. And there's a, there's a good example of doing your job. They run a a counter, they faked the ball to the right and brought it back, and we, we stayed in position and make the stop. They'll say no gain for Brown on his sixth carry for 11 yards. And this is just not the spot any team wants to be in, let alone, you know, TMP is basically a, a, a run-oriented oriented team, uh, you know, third and forever. Or two of seven on third downs, third and 17 from their own 28. Brown in motion right to left. It'll be option play, and Scott say, oh, that's... That time, the quarterback with the first down to the 40, 60, from the football, but the the ball hit, the, or the runner was down, and that time, a quarterback keeper on third and 17, and it goes for 18 to the 46-yard line. Oh, my. That was well executed on TMP's part. Poor defense on our part. Just kind of looking back at it, almost looked like they had him crowd right away at the just inside the 30, and and somehow quarterback Schwartz found a hole through there for the first down. Well, he's not looking to go down. I mean, if you want them tackled, you got to tackle them. They're not going to tackle themselves. So fresh set of downs at the 47-yard line, fifth play of the drive, pummeled snap or pobbled snap and picked up by Shoemaker, but dropped down immediately. Kelton Cook with the two-yard loss or yard loss back to the 45, setting up second and 11. Well, maybe TMP's trying to get in third and long again. They'll yeah. have us just where they, they want us. Second down and about 11 and a half here, 45-yard line. And again, they're going to milk the clock down as far as they can. Or at the 8.50 mark of the third quarter, 14-0 Scott City. This will be play number six of this drive. They converted to third and 17 on an 18-yard run. Flexbone set on second and 11. Option play left side. Shoemaker turns it up. This is better defended by Scott City. It's Baylor Vasquez and Oscar Mendez drop him out at the 47 for two. And it sets up a third and nine. Now we're putting in our speed rusher now, Oscar Peregrino. Uh, Baylor trotting off the field. And the field starting to slant toward the west. <laughs> oh, Baylor with a good stop there. He's had a pretty good junior campaign on the defensive line for the Beavers. Baylor can do some things. Yes, uh, he can. Yeah, he, he can be dangerous. To hold chicken, too. Yes. Uh, Schwartz converted on an 18 yard run on third down. He's going to be back to pass this time. Fires it up for grabs. The pass is going to be deflected and intercepted. Oh. No, dropped. Trango almost had it in bounds and then lost it out of bounds at about the 37 yard line in Scott City territory. Intended receiver was the sophomore, Caden Dinkle. Fourth down and nine. And we'll see if TMP flirts with maybe going for this near midfield. Scott City does bring their punt return unit out. That was a pretty well-thrown ball, but it was great defense. 
And remember, the quarterback, Peyton Schwartz, also serves as their punter. Scott City has to be careful about that. They do Now they will line up in punt formation. With 7.55 to go third quarter, he'll take the snap from his own 39, almost blocked a line drive kick right to Tarango to his own 16-yard line. Goes left. He has some room on the left side. 30, 35, 40. It's a flag. Flies, and he takes it to the 45-yard line where he's tackled by Colton Hagens. They'll mark this flag at around the 34-yard line and a great toss by the official that time. He threw that one about 20 or 30 yards. Uh, I, did, did, did you see a penalty there? I, oh, there might have been a quick block in the black. I think oh, I did I, see it. I think yeah. our guy fell down and it didn't block anybody. Uh, they're calling it officially holding. So that wipes off about a 29-yard punt return. Oh, well, and, that's going to be, what, a 20-yard difference in field position. And that, yes, that... Uh, that does make a big difference. I'm yeah. Sure it does, yeah. Four, or ball will be at the 25-yard line, first and 10. You know, with the trouble we've been having maintaining drives, you know, 20 yards is a, is a big deal to Se give up. Our second worst field position of the night for the Beavers on first down. They'll go left side here and not a lot of room there, maybe about a yard for Tracer Chapman. We went, we went out unbalanced right that time, so we had more players to the right, then we tried to run the ball back to the left. Well, TMP's not really shifting over too much when we go unbalanced, so that, they had us outmanned at the point of attack. Now, Mark this right at the, just across the 25, maybe a couple inches, second down and 10 as we approach the seven-minute mark of the third quarter. Rumford will be split to the left, two receivers to the right. Wing to the right is Volgamore on second down. Rolls right now will step up. He has a lot of room right side. Finds a wide open Alex Trango at the 35 or 38. He'll take it across the 40 to the 41-yard line on a gain of 16 where he's tackled by Caden Dinkle. Good throw and catch there. But I'll tell you, if Camden would have decided to run the ball and cut back to the left, the C had parted. TMP didn't have anybody left on the, the west side of the field. He, he could run forever, as fast and quick as he is. Beavers sat their own 41 with a 14-point lead near the mid part of the third quarter. Here's a carry for McDaniel. He gets met up at the 42-yard line for a gain of one. As that time with the tackle was Ryan Casey, make it a couple yards to the 43 and second and eight. Okay, positive yards on first down. Wasn't as many as we'd like, but we'll take it. As we're at the 6:20 mark of this fast-moving third quarter, 14-0 Scott City. This is just this is going to be a fast-moving game. Both teams committed to running the ball. There's not a lot of points being scored. And on second down, Voldemort <laughs> looking right for Trang on its deep slant. Oh, he had it and dropped it. He would add a first down at the Monarch 47-yard line, and that one drops to the turf, setting up a third down and eight. I'm not sure Alex needed to jump there for that. I'd like to see him run right through the ball because if he would have run through there and made that catch, I think he would have gone the distance. Yep, and he was covered on the play that time by Isaac Purinton, a sophomore, and Scott City has yet to convert a third down tonight. Coming into tonight, they were 50%, but they're 0 of 4 here, midway point of this third quarter, third and eight at their own 43. Make that third and seven of them for slant pattern. Ruffer, and there's a first down completion. And he fumbles the football, and TMP recovers it at the 47 yard line. It was stripped out of there after he made the catch, and Scott City with their second turnover of the night. Oh, well, darn it. That's all I got to say on that, Adam. Yes. Darn it. Good throw, good catch. Got to tuck the ball away. You know what I was saying about uh, Alex Trango getting, sometimes you just need to go down. You know, you make a catch like that, get down on the ground. Yes. They're, they're going to try to strip the ball. The Beavers on come now after that turnover, minus four in the takeaways this year. From the 47, best field position for the night for TMP. Toss sweep left side out of the Brown, and flag comes out. Tanner Gooden swallows him up for a yard loss. This one has all the indications of a holding on the Monarchs. I'll tell you, that was really good hustle by Tanner there. Uh, ball's going away from him, and he chased it down from the backside. And 
It's a holding on Thomas Moore prep, and that'll make it a first and 20. Their second penalty of the night officially uh, accepted, I should say. This will mark this back to the 37-yard line where it's first and 20. You almost think here, Skip, that TMP may just start spreading it out and going empty backfield and letting I, Swartz keep the ball. I don't, not yet. I think there, I think that's coming, but not yet. You know, it's if we were up 20 to nothing, yeah, I think yes. But at this point, I mean, we're, we're, we're turning the ball over and we're not really a. Uh, Adder Blount on a jet much. sweep left side and nice cover. Yeah, defense, nice takedown and another two point takedown for Cullen McDaniel at the 40 yard line. A gain of three on first down. Yeah, he's going to tech fall the Monarchs here pretty quick. <laughs> he is. So second and 17. Zadler Brown with his seventh carry for 14 yards tonight. That was a good job by McDaniel uh, shedding his blocker at the point of attack. Well, you know, he's, he's picked up some weight and, and, and some strength. You know, he, he wasn't very big, you know, he's freshman and sophomore year, but no. he, he's, a, he's a pretty good specimen now. Five minutes to go third quarter on second down. Here's a pass. Oh, there you go. And Jackson Rumford will bring nice down the quarterback at the 35-yard line. Rumford with the sack sets up a third and long, and that is his second sack of the year. Well, Jackson did a nice job there. They had two guys blocking him. He maintained possession, and he kind of, Split the blockers in and, ma and made the, the tackle. Uh, nice job. Maybe he's trying to tone for the fumble. You think? Maybe, <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Take his frustration yeah, yeah. out on that a little bit. Third down coming up and 22 for TMP at their own 35. 14 nothing. your score. Scott City with all 14 points in the second quarter on a one-yard run by Camden Volgamore and a six-yard run in that second period. And we're going to have a timeout taken by Thomas Moore Prep, and we'll take it as well. They're down to two left in the game. The 4.15 mark, third quarter, Scott City 14, TMP nothing. We'll come back in one minute. This is Beaver football. You know, nothing's better than home. Third down and 22 for TMP out of their own timeout at their own 35-yard line. 14-0 Beaver lead, a two-receiver set flex, bone a man of motion, play fake, and now throwing it right side, and the pass is going to be caught, and then near a, almost to a first down out of the backfield is going to be Adler Brown. He'll take it to the 46-yard line. This makes it a fourth and three on a nice uh, about... 19-yard pass play. That was a well-executed wheel. You know, run him guy out in the flat, turn him up field, clear it out. Ball was thrown well, made a nice catch. And you know TMP is going to go for this on fourth and three. I would assume that they are. Fourth and three, 340 to go third quarter, 14-0. Scott City with the advantage. They're 0 of 1 on fourth downs tonight. It's just direct snap up the middle, and Shoemaker is going to be close well, to the first down. I got it. Jackson Rumford singling no first down. The line judge at the 40, inside the 44-yard line says no first down. I don't think he got it. Where they have it spotted, that's a turnover on downs. He needed three. He got about two and a half on that. There's no question that's well and short. I think that's a good spot from where, I was, yes. where I'm sitting. And it is. 50 yards away. A turnover on downs for this Beaver defense after TMP forced a fumble with 3.30 to go third quarter. So they'll be at their own 44-yard line, first and 10. 
Can we have a drive with no turnovers and fun or penalties? I'm ready for that. Yeah. The Beavers have needed a long drive here. They've had a couple of decent lengthy drives, about 30 or 40 yards, but they've stalled on turnovers and penalties tonight. Here's a carry right side for Avery Nolan. First down, turns it up midfield, 45 into Monarch territory and a first down run. There's a good spark for number 16 and a gain of 13 to the 43. Well blocked, and, and you know Avery did a nice job of getting the ball upfield. Off, off times they want to run her, want to bounce it to the outside. That's just not where that play's blocked. Scott said he's eighth first and ten of the night puts him at the Monarch 43. So we approach three to go third quarter. Pistol wing T handoff right side. Here is Pierce Vallejo, the sophomore. He'll gain a nice chunk of yardage inside the 36 for a gain of seven on first down. Okay, there's there's two backs there from Scott City that have turned the ball upfield and run north or south. We're not trying to be cute. We're just going to take it to you. If you can tackle us, fine. If not, we're going to run you over. Give him eight to the 35, second and two. Sophomore called on here, and he gets another carry. First down inside the 30 to the 28. Give him seven more. And, man, the sophomore... Coming in in probably most crunch time of the year for him as a sophomore with a nice back of a, a pickup of seven. Well, he's running it in there with authority. Yes, he is. Uh, Twenty-eight yard line, first and ten, with two thirty-five to go, third quarter. Fourteen nothing Beaver lead. Vallejo stays in there as a tailback. Tied in right side. It'll be a counter left side to Colin McDaniel trying to bounce it out. He will. 25, stiff arm inside the 20, stumbling into the red zone of the 17-yard line and a gain of 11 on his sixth carry for 44 yards. And this is one of those punchy in the mouth drives for the Beavers. Well, it's amazing how when you're successful running the ball inside, that all of a sudden you become a, 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 able to run the ball outside also. You know, TMP is actually looking for us to run the ball inside as opposed to where they're playing us, the way they're playing us at the start of the game. And it ended up being a touchdown saving tackle by Adler Brown in the Lewis Automotive Red Zone pitch. Oh, and they'll no. pitch it oh, late behind geez. the reeled him by Noel. He made uh, uh, a little bit out of nothing. That was well defended by the Monarchs, and somehow Noel maybe eked out about a yard on that play, second and nine. Well, when you're pitching the ball over the head of a <laughs> defensive player, it's not a good idea. That's you a know, little, yeah. Give the ball to Vallejo for crying out loud. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a good uh, old lock pass into the paint oh that time. Oh my gosh! No, no, no. <laughs> well, you know, gaining nothing on that is about as good as that was going to turn out for us. Second and ten. Here's a sweet play left side. This is McDaniel. He may bounce to the outside. Oh, a nice upending tackle that time by. The corner, Peyton Schwartz at the 14. If he does not make that tackle, yeah, he's gone. Now. He is. And that was a, that was the way Colin needed to run that. You know, we, we they had us in second and long. You need to try to pick up a few more extra yards. If it had been second and short, I'm sure he would have just turned the ball upfield. But Beavers one of six on third down, facing seven yards to go at the 14. With the final minute of this third quarter, option pass play. Volgamore looking to rolling to his right, steps up. Run it. He's going to run it. He's got a first down inside the go. 10 of the five yard line. They'll mark him officially at the five on a gate of nine and a nice quarterback scramble of nine yards. Sets up the Beavers first and goal at the five. Well, he can do that. I mean, he, he is capable of doing it. Nobody's open. Take off and run. That was good. That was well defended by the Monarchs, and you're right. That was a wise play to turn it up. They'll mark it officially at the six for a gain of about eight. 45 seconds here, third quarter, 14-0 Scott City. Run a little unbalanced to the left on first down. Oh, a busted oh, play, but they boy. do get it somehow to McDaniel. He's inside the six at the five. A flag comes out. Mm -mm -mm. With 35 and a half seconds to go third quarter. And it's a holding on Scott City. Their fifth penalty of the night. Well, Vallejo might be coming back into this game sooner rather than later. I mean, he really gave a Scott City a spark with a couple of carries and 15 yards on this drive. The holding penalty would be to the 14-yard line. Ends up being a gain of two and then a 10-yard penalty. 
So we're first and goal from the 14. Yep. First and goal from the 14. Here's Volgamore. Keeps it looking left. Now uh, steps up. He's going to run it himself inside the 10, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 9 with 18 seconds to go. He gains five yards on first down. Adler Brown with the stop. Good little option player, option pass look like. But and that's, that's okay. We picked up some, some good yards. It beats an, inter or an interception or an incomplete pass. Collins going to be he'd be open coming across the middle, I and mean, we're going to put him out wide. But uh, second and goal at the nine, eight or eleven or eighteen seconds here in the third. It'll be a carry. This is Tracer Chapman this time inside the five, and he'll they'll say he was down before he went out of bounds to the four. As that time, Peyton Schwartz loses his helmet. As that'll wind down the third quarter, so no scoring in this second half so far. The Beavers will have goal to go inside the five after a five-yard run by Chapman. 14-0 as we head to the fourth. We'll step aside for a minute break. This is Beaver football. Sports have this amazing way of making a positive impact in our community. Whether it's helping children, boosting local economies, or creating role models, that's our goal at American Implement too. We believe in being a part of the communities we serve by just being a good neighbor. Thanks for being ours. Consultation today at 872-2954. Turner Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning, your Bryant factory authorized dealer in South Highway 83 in Scott City, where they do whatever it takes. I want to thank our sponsors making this broadcast possible. Lebanon Lawn and Tree Jackson, Legal Group, JFB for Advertising, j and Trucking, j and Car and Truck, HRC Feed Yards, Hamey Amy Farms, High Choice Feeders, and Great Western Tire and Deck Mart furniture and appliance. Third and goal from just inside the five as play resume of the fourth quarter for Scott City up 14-0. And is this going to be four down territory for the Beavers? That's the question. You know what? I I, I say it is. We're, our defense is playing well enough. We don't get this on four. four. It's up the no. middle for Avery. No on the first play of the fourth quarter. And there it is. The cannon fires at Darner Field. Touchdown, Beavers. They go up 20 to nothing. Five seconds into the fourth quarter. Well, I guess it's not going to be fourth down territory. No, down it's territory. not. It's just going to be three and, and take a touchdown. A nice 11-play, nice 56-yard 56 drive. This will be Jackson Rumford for the PAT out of the hole to Colin McDaniel and Brevin Volgamore to snap it here with 11.55 to go. Here's a kick, and Rumford's kick is... Good into the south end zone and onto the track. Yeah, that would have been good from 40. <laughs> We're five seconds into the fourth quarter. Scott City with a three-score lead at 21 to nothing. We'll come back in 30 seconds. This is Beaver football. For O Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. On Saturday, September 30th from 10 to 3 during Wimmy Diddle. The Beavers go 11 plays, 56 yards, their longest sustained drive of the night. They get a five-yard run from Avery Knoll. Extra point kicked in by Jackson Rumford. We want to thank Z, Waddle, Bo, Z Bottling Water for providing water in our broadcast booth all season long. Custom labeled water, high quality H2O, the pure, premium purified drinking water of Western Kansas. 21-0 Beaver lead, opening seconds of the fourth quarter. Scott City scores on the first play of the second quarter, and they score on the first play of the fourth quarter. Rumford to kick this into the south end zone at the 40-yard line. And this one is going to be taken and bubbled into the end zone. That's going to be a touchback because he did not have full control. And it'll be first and 10 Monarchs at their own 20. That was good. To, I mean, he's yes. fortunate he wasn't going to run that out because we had excellent coverage coming down. Oh, you're right. 
That was Austin Gilbert. TNP has not played since about the middle of the second quarter with Griffin or Gavin Shoemaker, one of their top running backs, their top running back, I should say. Nine touchdowns this year and over 500 yards on the ground, and he has not played since the second quarter. That's been a big blow for their offense, but they've moved the ball a few times. But the, you have a heady senior in Peyton Schwartz at quarterback who's like a running back in that position. It's almost like it's single wing in a way. And here's a frustrating thing for the Monarchs. They have to call a timeout after that. 11.53 to go fourth quarter. Yeah, they're just a little discombobulated now. You know, coming back from a 21-point lead with, with their offense and the way our defense is playing, it's, it's just kind of tough. And when they have one of their better players on the sideline, and it's hard to overcome. Football presented here tonight by Fro Electric, Fro Ag Service, Fro Heating and Cooling, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Neil Baker, First National Bank, Fairly Companies, and Farm Bureau Insurance, uh, Hugh and Berta Benson, and Decal Bear. But yeah, we're 11 53 mark of the fourth quarter. It's now 21 0 for Scott City. And yeah, you mentioned this is as what TNP does, their 75 25 run pass. I mean, a team that hasn't thrown the ball as well this year as maybe they had in years past. This is a very large hill to over or mountain to climb. Yeah, but yeah, you know, and you look at their their roster. You know, freshman, sophomore, freshman, sophomore, junior, sophomore. Yeah, you know, they've got a lot of young kids playing. This would be a good team in two A, maybe one A down the road. They they very well could be. Sweet play of the right side on first down and maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage that time was Derek Becker underneath there on the stop for Scott City. As the Beavers did put in there, Trey Ryan, the linebacker with the tackle, no gain. Trey's got good quickness and strength. I, he should be a player for us. Absolutely, the junior linebacker came in and filled that well. Opening seconds of this fourth quarter here at Darner Field, 21-0 your score. Of course, we'll know the classifications come Monday. That'll be, I believe it's gonna be Monday released by the High School Activities Association. Two receiver set, man in motion. It'll be a quarterback counter and up the middle. What a run for a first down for Peyton Schwartz. He gets 11 yards to the 31 yard line and he's been main, their main man in the second half. Well, good, well, well blocked play, good run. Um, it's hard to believe that they picked up that much on that play, but you know, they, their offense is, is kind of tricky. They do a lot of mm -hmm. fakes and if you if you get out of position, they're going to burn you. Yes, they are. 31 yard line right hash mark first and 10, 1048 to go. Two receiver set, flex bone set. They'll send the man in motion. It'd be a quarterback keeper up the middle this time, and there's nothing going there for Peyton Schwartz. Baylor Vasquez helps out with the tackle. Braden Bruner in there as well for no gain, second and 10. I guess you should give him a gain a yard. Well, it's, yeah, they aren't sure minimal. <laughs> hey, I see TMP is in, have no particular rush to uh, get another playoff. I mean, the play clock's down to 14, and it's going to be under 10 by the time they snap it. Yeah, TMP only has nine other players make that 11 other players suit it up. Here's a fumbled snap, but picked up this time, and nice job along the end that time by. Case Armendaris as he tackles Peyton Schwartz for a loss. Back to the 27 yard line for a loss of five and sets up third and 14. And now their TMP's in a, in, a, in a bad spot and they're not particularly a good throwing team yet. Third and 15 is a lot to pick up on the ground, but they've done that once before tonight with the option. TMP tonight is three of 10 on third downs. Make that three of nine. They have it at their own 30, or make that 27 yard line. As Schwartz is back to pass and Caesar Peregrino has sack number five of the season. He gets in there, drops him back for a loss of nine and Bailey does a somersault at the 18 yard line. <laughs> Caesar's fast. He can give me. <laughs> and you know, when he's going up against a 280, 260 pound guy, you got to be quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, it certainly helps. And they'll be in putt formation. TMP ended up losing a net two yards on that series on five plays. 
They'll be back to punt for the sixth time tonight and here with 8.40 to go. And they're punting into whatever win there is. It is. Line drive to Tarango at the 48-yard line. Goes left, 45 or 35, and he is going to be brought down. Not quite a face mask or horse collar at the 32-yard line on a 30-yard punt and about a 16-yard return to the Monarch 32 with 8.28 to go. Boy, those low punts like that are just made to be returned. You know, good catch on the, the punt and then you know, pick up 15 yards on the return, and we're within scoring distance. 32-yard line of TMP left hash mark. The Beavers trying to put the nail in the coffin here. The first three and a half minutes of this fourth quarter. Triangle will be split to the left. Noel to the right. Wing to the right. Shotgun with the tight end on the right side as Volgamore rolled to his right on first down. Just a straight up quarterback sweep. 25, 20. Bounces, almost bounces to the outside as he takes it to the 19-yard line for a Baker's dozen. Tackle made that time. Elijah Lang. He's got good speed, doesn't he? Oh, he does. He used that sprinter speed on that one. Yes, and, and, and then to run over the defender there. I'm not sure who tackled who there at the end of that play. <laughs> yes. Elijah Lang, uh, the freshman, get a little time here on varsity there, and the Beavers are into the Lewis Automotive red zone. Bailey splits to left, tight end right side. This will be counter left side. McDaniel has a lot of real estate. Nothing but end zone to the left side. Touchdown, Scott City. Colin McDaniel with touchdown run, number four on the year, and the Beavers tack another six on the board to go up 27 to nothing. Well, there was nobody out there to make that tackle. The only way that play wasn't gonna score was if Colin would have fallen down. Colin McDaniel with the extra point. Dayanera Castillo in to kick the extra point out of the hole to McDaniel. Place down. The kick is on the way. Oh, she missed it right. That's the, the first one she's missed this year, isn't it? Uh, one was blocked and that one was missed. I blame the coal posts on that one. They moved. <laughs> 27 other than Beaver lead with 7.57 to go. We'll come back in 30 seconds. This is Scott City Football. Fairly Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the beavers. Football here tonight brought to you by Clint's Diesel Repair, Shells, Flyers and More, Brookover Cattle Company, Burning Farms, Beef Belt, Beavertown, FFL, Burley Grain, b &H Paving and American Implement. <laughs> Another three or two play scoring drive for Scott City. Three of their four touchdowns on two plays. This one covers 32 yards and 61 seconds. Colin McDaniel with a 19 yard touchdown run. The mixed extra point keeps it at 27 0. McDaniel, nice night, nine carries, 69 yards, and that touchdown. Rumford booms it, and this will be taken across the 5 10. 15 to near the 20 yard line is running into Trey Ryan that time was the kickoff return man, Austin Gilbert. And Ryan maybe a little shaken up after that play. You know, you're down 27 points. It's a deep kickoff that you can just let go into the end zone. He made the decision to catch that and run it back with authority and I give him credit for that. that I mean, he was looking to score. 20 yard line, so he did take it back to the 20. 7.57 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Beavers will be at Hugoton next Friday night. That'll be their district opener. Hugoton was up by six of the break over Colby. Last check. They'll send a man in motion. It'll be a handoff up the middle and upended right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he can add a half a yard. Was the tailback on first down, that being Max Gerstner, the freshman. Second down and long coming up. He'll gain one to the 21. Nice job there by Cook. Uh, kind of submarine in that play. Yeah. How about uh, the sophomore, K. John, with the tackle? The sophomore in there. Scott said he's got Jack Leitner as well on the other side of that defensive end. Some mixture of one and twos in there. 
Second down to nine, 21-yard line, three receiver set. Option, keep it right side. Oh, breaking through a tackle that time. And no pitch that time. And a nice open field tackle. It'll be a loss of a couple as Tracer Chapman with the tackle on the quarterback Schwartz inside the 20 at about the 18. That'll be a loss of three. You know, that's just how well we played that play. That, that was a good run. I mean, he, he broke a couple tackles and got it. And, and they just kept coming at him. I mean, our, our defenders just kept coming at him and finally got him down to the ground. No game. And they lost three on that. Even though K. John did not make the tackle, he broke through that tackle and lost some yardage and let the rest of the defense come through there. Cade's a tough kid. Three of 10 are the Monarchs on third down and to be a counter play left side and Cesar Peregrino waiting for that one immediately for the ball carrier Adler Brown at the 18 yard line. No gain on the play and a three and out for the Scott City defense. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that ball carrier thought, well, uh, didn't somebody <laughs> supposed to block him? I mean, <laughs> yes. Caesar, he was r right there waiting. Scott City, you got to have the feeling they're due for a punt return. Oh, gosh, do we have too many guys on the field? Mm. It's to be the seventh punt of the night. I don't think we have enough guys on the field, but that happens late in the game when you start doing a lot of subbing. Halfway mark of this fourth quarter. Now Kelton Cook a run back there. Here's a snap and the kick. It's a wobbly kick, and this will be taken by Trango in the bounce at his own 48. Goes left side. Now we'll go to the right side. 50, 45, across the 40 with a stiff arm. And inside the 35 and down to the 31-yard line on a 21-yard punt. But there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage with 5.39 to go. And it ended up being a 34-yard punt and a 20 one yard return. They're still talking about this. This is a holding on Scott City. Oh my. Uh, yeah. Cross country, they're going to be running up at Lawrence tomorrow, Rimrock Farm. They've had a really good season and looking to have a good day there. That's going to be good competition there. They've had a good season. Tennis has had a good season. They'll be at Garden City as well tomorrow. You know, 40, I, I'll yeah. give our tennis program yes. some kudos here. You know, year in, year out, we gradu you know, graduate kids and we have more kids stepping up and we do well, real well within our regional. And, you know, it's kind of tough when you get to stay with, with some of the competitions. 41 yard line, Pierce Filet with a carry, breaks through two tackles, rumbles and stumbles his way as he wears that cowboy collar for a 13 yard gain to the 28 yard line. He has that old school throwback look. Yes, he does. And, you know, uh, uh, he's making a case for himself starting next week. Yes, he is. Five and a half to go. First and 10 for Scott City at the 28 yard line. Bailey will be split to the right. Three carries, 28 yards for Vallejo. And it'd be a carry for him as he takes it inside the 25 and down to the 22 for six more. Well, I'm going to go yeah. out on a limb and predict they're going to give it to him again. And I think you're right. For whatever reason, I don't know if they wear why because uh, he's wearing number 40, but he reminds me of the old Nebraska fullback, Corey Tom. Schlesinger. Oh, I was going to say Tom Rathman. <laughs> that too. That's before my time. Yeah. Oh, come on. Here's a carry. Here's Vallejo inside the 15, and it's into the Lewis Automotive red zone at 11, and a gain of 11 on that play. He's up to 45 yards on five carries, and another first and 10, the 15th of the night. Speaking of Nebraska fullbacks, you know, Lance Lewis from yes. Scott City, you know, he unfortunately had a neck injury that precluded his career, but he was... He was I, quite a player. I found out when he was in the Coca-Cola Bowl in Japan a few years ago, or tw 31 years ago, he actually ran eye back for a couple of plays. Here's Vallejo. This time he does enough to get back to the line of scrimmage. Is that time Kendall Walker with a stop at the 11 or make it a loss of a yard to the 12. 
you know, if I remember right, Lance won the, the, the state track meet in shot put and the 100. Yes. And there's, that's a combination. <laughs> you don't get that too no, often. No, not very often. Uh, four minutes to go in the game. Second and 11 from the 12 for Scott City. They have a 27 nothing lead over 3-0 TNP Marion. They get to go to Russell next week to open up district play. This will be a handoff right side. Avery Knoll trying to bounce to the outside. He'll get inside the 10 as he leans into the knot or to the 10. They'll give him two on second down. Elijah uh, once again with that tackle, Elijah Lang. But it's third down and nine from the 10. Well, this drive is going to take the clock under three minutes. I wouldn't be surprised that just for practice purposes we try a field goal. If, you I know. think you might as well if they don't get it. Well, a pistol wing T. It'll be a carry for Vallejo. Bounces to the left side, and he's going to be upended right in the middle of the field. Perfect field goal spot at the seven on third down and nine. He'll gain three to the yep. seven. Field and goal team's going on. Yep, you're right. Now the question is who's going to kick the field goal? Well, I'm going to say gonna it, it's not going to be Baylor Vasquez. Nope, it's, it's going to be Jackson Rumford. This is Scott City's first field goal attempt of the year. It'll be right in the middle of the field, 20, we'll call it a 25-yard field goal with under three to go out of the hole to Colin McDaniel. Snap is good, placed down. The kick is on the way, and that kick is good. Jackson Rumford from 25 yards out makes this a 30 to nothing Beaver lead with 2.48 to go. And we will take a 30 second break. This is Beaver football. A six play, 34 yard drive and 311 sees Jackson Rumford kick Scott City's first field goal of the year as he split the uprights from 25 yards out. And it's a 30 to nothing lead as Scott City has padded their lead here in the fourth quarter with 16 fourth quarter points. That's a positive sign to see here tonight. Well, when we finally got things going here, we've got them going. Rumford will put uh, foot to ball at the 40 yard line. Kicks this one deep, angled toward the middle. This will be returned here by Austin Gilbert. Cross the five, he'll get to cross the 10 and that is it to the 11 yard line. That time on the tackle, the freshman, Matthew Wheeler. And now down on the turf at the 11 yard line, the Monarchs, Caden Dinkle. They have been riddled with injuries all season long. That's a, you hate to see that this late in the game. Uh, it, yeah. They're bringing out the, some paramedics as well at the 11 yard line. They lost their regular game one starter, Carson Lyles, first game of the year to a broken leg. They also lost another receiver for a few weeks in Braxton Basketball, freshman. We're gonna take a timeout with 2.41 to go. Let's take uh, one minute for now. Two, one minute break, 30 to nothing, Scott City. This is Beaver football. If you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides new and used vehicles. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet and GMC dealership in Scott City. In an award-winning Ram truck. Lop Motors, located under the Great American Flag in Dodge City. The injured monarch was Caden Dinkle, a sophomore, 5'11", 155 pounder. They carry him off the field. It'll be first and 10 TMP at their own 12 when play resumes here with 2.41 to go. This has been a game of really field position all night that Scott City has controlled. They have a 30 to nothing lead and some more subs in. 
Man in motion. It'll be a handoff right side on first down, turning it upfield, and Kelton Cook. And also Peyton Burtner in on the tackle at about the 15-yard line for a gain of three. The ball carrier that time uh, was Derek Becker. Well, one th consistent for us during this whole game is the play of our defense. Mm -hmm. you now we, we just haven't given TMP much of anything. 2.15 to go, and TMP is just, if they can, they're going to try to milk this clock out and get out of here. They Ad certainly don't need, need any more injuries. Absolutely. Adrian Alarcon, a senior in there as well. On second down, they'll go left side with this carry. And nice job by Caden Couchman turning it up and making the tackle that time on Adler Brown for about a gain of two to the 17, setting up a third and five. Yeah, we got a freshman, Easton Eisenhower, in now. He, yes. He did a pretty nice job fighting off a block. Ian Pierce Leo in those interior linebacker spots. You also have the senior Aiden Preston over there at a the corner. At the other one is the sophomore Kevin Wiebe. He's really had a pretty good sophomore campaign on the JV side. Also, Juan Rodriguez, a junior interior lineman. And also got to include uh, Brody Holstein, the sophomore in there at one outside backer spot. Third and five. Play fake. Here is Schwartz back to pass. And he'll tuck it up and Kelton Cook will have his first career sack. Back of the 16-yard line, a loss of one. Good coverage downfield. There was no place to throw that ball. At one point in this game, Peyton Schwartz had 46 yards. He's now down to 29. Yeah, they're going the wrong direction, aren't they? Yes, they are. It is officially no game, but that counts as a sack under a minute to go. Fourth down and six at the 17. 40 seconds to go in this one, and they may just punt this one away as Bergner will drop back. This will be TMP's eighth punt of the night. Short, or, uh, yep, Schwartz will kick this one away. Caught by Bergner at the 48-yard line. Goes right side, 40, 35, 30, 25, and down to the 23-yard line. With about 25 seconds ago, Bertner showing his athleticism in the sideline, loves it. Yeah, he, we have some athletes. How about that punt return? You look good doing it. And we may see a lot of twos, maybe probably one play left in this game. We'll see. The Monarch I'm, 23. I'm guessing we're gonna take a knee, but. Well, Bergner will come in at quarterback. It's a 30 to nothing Scott City lead. As Leitner will go to the left side, hosting the tight on the right side. Man in motion is Weeby. It'll be Vallejo carry up the middle inside the 25. He'll take it for three to 20 on one and a pretty good night. He has seven carries and 47 yards. We'll see if Scott City will take one more snap, but they get their first shutout of the year. They've allowed a combined six points over the last two weeks. And the final score is going to be 30 to nothing for the Beavers as they are three and one on the air. And with the win, Coach Jim Turner is now the sole possession of the third most wins by a coach in program history. He was tied with Bill Arnold with 56 wins coming into tonight. He now has win number 57 of his coaching career in Scott City. Well, we, we have some room for improvement, and we're going to need to improve it as we go through district play. 30 to nothing is your final postgame show coming up in three minutes. This is Beaver Football. BBN is supported by Shapland Real Estate, State Farm, The Original Grande, Bullertson Family Dentistry, Volgamore Family Farms, Western State Bank, Wood River Energy, Scott